Okay, so here's the table I already filled out, and it's describing different aspects of this pattern, including one I haven't talked about yet, which is the height and width. So if we look in this table, we have the step numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I added in step 2, and I added in step 5. Those are new. Those are not in the picture. And I knew that the red is constant, so I just I, I wrote in 5 for all steps, right? And I wrote here, this is my sloppy handwriting, plus 0. So the slope, the rate of change is zero. It's not changing at all. Purple and green, I lump them together to make it easier to analyze. We'll analyze purple individually later and green individually later. But if you look at them in total, we notice there's zero, then there's eight purple, then we add eight more green and eight more purple and eight more green and eight more purple. So if we look at them all together, we start at zero and we have this nice proportional relationship. We're just adding eight with each step. So our slope is eight. That's what this says right here. Then the total is a total amount of squares or pixels. I call them pixels. So if we add red and purple and green, how many do we have? So I could, I could just look at it this way and add these rows, right? 5 plus 6 is 21. Eight, 5 plus 8 is 13. 5 plus 0 is 5. Um, that's one way of looking at it, to the total pixels. I should be putting a plus sign here. I don't know why I'm doing that. I'm putting an arrow. Um, and that's what this is. So if we think about the total, the total, I wrote plus 8 here because the slope is 8 as well. Uh, in other words, the only difference the total is we're including the red, so we start at 5, and then we add 8 each time. And we're adding 8 just like we were adding with the purple and green because that's the only pixel colors that are changing. Then I have the height and the width. So the height of the shape is, I'm calling it this right here. You can call it length or whatever you want. Let me get my line tool, because every time I try to draw a straight line, it doesn't come out so great. Um, so the height is this dimension right here, right? Oops. The height is the up and down. I like to use height instead of length. And the height is 1, 2, 3. And the width, right, is also 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. And then this height right here, I'm going to attempt to draw it because it takes me too long to grab my line tool. 1, 2, 3, 4 is 5 by 5. The square again. So I'm thinking of the outline almost of this shape. You can see it's a square, right? If I just kind of enclose this in a square, I'm kind of viewing it this way. This shape basically lives inside the perimeter of a square. And then in step three, it's just nine by nine, if you count it. Oops, not the best square. I'll do that again. So this is a nine by nine square. Um, let's label that. And what's missing, you see it's going up by twos, is step two, which is seven by seven. So these squares, three by three, five by five, seven by seven, nine by nine, so on and so forth, the slope is two, it's increasing by two. So once I set all this up, um, I can graph it. So let me, let me do that next, let me graph it. All right, so here's our graph, right? And if we look at the red, I'll color code now, uh, red's always at 5, regardless of step numbers, so it's going to be a horizontal line, right? And this is the function, I'll call it r of t equals 5. In other words, the red uh, red pixels, based on time, is always 5. It's always at 5. At 0, we're at 5. At step 1, we're at 5. All these points here are 2, we're at 5. At 5, we're at 5. At every step, 10, 15, we're always at a height of 5. So we have this horizontal line where our slope is 0, and r of t equals 5, which is also the y-intercept. Now purple and green, I'm just going to use purple for that. Uh, we start at 0, at step 0, and then go 8, 16, 24. So I'll plot the points first. We have 0, 0, 1, 8, 2, 16, and so on and so forth, 3, 24, which is now off my grid. And I'm going to just draw a line like this. Not the best line, sorry about that. But this is, I'll call it, this is not the best notation, P, G of T. Purple and green based on time. That's going to equal, well, our slope it starts at 0 as our intercept. So 0 plus our slope is 8 over 1, right? We're going up 8 over 1. So it's 0 plus 8T, or just I'll put, just put 8T. That means we add 8 more pixels per second. And the total is the same thing, except we're shifting up a little bit. And I'll use black for a total here. It's the same slope. We're going up 8, except we start at 5. So here's 5, and then up 8 to 13 over 1. And then up 8 over 1 to 21. So here we've got 
the same thing. Every point you can see it shifted up five units because we're adding both and we're adding the red to the purple. So actually this is kind of a nice introduction to adding vectors or different directionals. If we're adding this, I think at least, this red and this purple and green line, we get this new line. And if I'm wrong about that, please let me know. Um, because you can add vectors. I guess I haven't done that in a while. So I'm wondering, is this a good way of thinking about the addition of these two uh, lines by looking at the black result here? Anyway, sorry about that tangent. I'll put t of t. So the total pixels based on time equals 8t plus 5, or 5 plus 8t. I like to write it this way, where we start with the intercept, uh, the 5 value, and then we add 8 pixels per second. It just makes more sense for my brain. Now the height and width are also going to be the same line. I'll use gray. In this case, we start at 3, but our slope is 2. So 1, 2, 3, here's 3. And then we go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, right, and so on and so forth. So this line right here represents both the height and the width because they grow at the same rate. So I'm going to write the width based on time, or width of time, and the height based on time. They're both equal. They both equal 3, our starting value, plus 2 pixels per second. And these are our graphs. Now the point is to, to predict kind of uh, these features of uh, step 100, the red, purple, and green, total height and width. So I'm not going to do that on the graph because I don't feel like continuing this graph until 100. I'm not going to do it in the table because I don't, I don't feel like doing it that way. I like to use equations. Now, why did I do the table and the graph? Why? Well, even though it's not going to directly uh, give me the answer here, I could use the table and graph. It helps me think about the problem so I can set up my equations and solve it that way. So let's do that next. Let's set up our equations. All right, so for, for this part of the video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear off the, the original pixels here so I can write my equations. So sorry if that confuses you. I'll, I'll reshow the pixel pattern again. But I wanted to have the table and graph handy so we can compare them to the equations and write them quickly. So let's, let's get going here. I don't want to take your time. So we have red. So our red equation is r of t equals 5. Right, it always equals 5. So if I was to say, well, what's going to happen in step 100? So r of 100 equals, this means how many red pixels would there be at time 100? Now, one thing I, that might be confusing, I realize in my notation here, I'm calling step numbers time. And if that confused you, I'm sorry. I, I could have put an S in here for step number. I could have put seconds here for step. Um, I, I'm associating step number with time, which that's confusing. I'm sorry about that. But... Um, just so you know my notation and what I mean, I'm referring to each step as happening every second. I mean, it could be every minute or every hour. Uh, it doesn't really matter. The point is I'm associating every change in t to a step number change. But I could have changed my variable and put an, put an s in there or whatever works. But now what this notation is saying is how many red pixels will there be at the 100th step or 100 seconds or whatever? The answer is going to be 5. There's still going to be 5. There's always 5. What about the purple and green? Well, pg based on t, or step number, oh, is equal to 8 times t. So if I want to know how many purple and green there will be at step 100, I'm simply going to multiply 8 by 100. I'm, or we can say I'm plugging in 100 for the variable here. So it's going to be 800 purple and green. Isn't that crazy? And then for the, um, let's do the total next. For the total, uh, we kind of combine these two. And you could just add 5 and 800, which is just the beauty of math, of course, is many ways to get to the answer. But I want to go into the equation directly, and I want to know what the total pixels will be at step 100 or 100 seconds or however you want to think of that. It's going to be 5 plus 8 times 100, and that's 805. Isn't that cool? It's just a combination of 5 and 800. It's all the pixels put together. Then we can look at the width and the height. They'll be equal, so we get a little break there. The width equals the height based on time, and that equals, um, sorry, 3 plus 2t. So if I want to know what the width and the height will be at 100, or step 100, I'm going to enter in 100 for t, into our equation. And they're all equal, so I'm not going to write height of 100 too. I'm going to write 3 plus 2 times 100. So that's 200 plus 3, which is 203. So there'll be this shape will be 203 units wide and tall, 
will have 805 total pixels, and of those pixels, there'll be 800 purple and 5 red. So now we're going to scroll down in a moment, and we're going to look at a more complicated uh, scenario, or at least it's just a different scenario, where we're only counting the purple versus the green. That's slightly different.